Welcome to my recording room. Today I'll be looking at how to acoustically treat this room the best way possible. Part of that requires looking at reverberation time in the room and finding the problem frequencies, but you'll find out how to do that now. Starting with reverberation time, you might be wondering what that is and I'll tell you. Reverberation time is the time it takes for an initial sound's reflections to fade away. For example, in this untreated room, I'm going to clap, and you're going to hear the reflections of that clap. The reflections of that clap were based on many things, such as the fabric the ceiling's made out of, the walls are made out of, and the floor is made out of. Now there's such a thing called RT60, and all this means is reverberation time, and how long it takes to decrease by 60 decibels. That's the best way to find out the reverberation time in your room. My walls are concrete painted over, my ceiling is hardboard, and my floor is carpet. All these factors play a huge part in the reverberation time in the room. Furthermore from this, there are different absorption coefficients in the room other than just a wall, ceiling, and floor, like this glass window. Sound will reflect differently when it hits this glass window as it would when it hits the concrete wall. All of this equates to unpredictable sound, which cannot be good when recording or mixing tracks. What I'll be doing later in the video is adding more absorption coefficients to this room that stop certain sound reflections and give myself more of a consistent sound when recording and mixing. By putting the height, length and width into this calculator, I'm able to assume the reverberation time within my room. Using that calculator, I have found that my average reverberation time is 0.4 seconds. Now that's okay, but I do want to get it lower, so that's why I'll be putting the other absorption coefficients in this room. Another problem that you may find in a recording room is that there are certain resonant frequencies that can be found only in your size room. These resonance frequencies can be found within the standing waves in your room. These standing waves are created by the sound and where it projects from, such as your speakers. The reason resonant frequencies can be so problematic is because when you're mixing a certain song or recording a certain song, you can hear those frequencies with more energy than other frequencies, creating distortion in what you're actually hearing, even though for someone else in a different room, they not, may not hear the same thing. The formula to finding these frequencies is that frequency equals velocity over two times a dimension of the room. For example, the length of this room. The length of this room is 4.4 meters. So to find some of the resonant frequencies in this room along the standing wave that travels from the back wall to this wall, you need to put velocity over two times 4.4 meters. Now velocity is just the speed of sound, which is 344 meters per second. So 344 meters per second over two times 4.4. This equates to 40, and then you turn that into hertz. So 40 hertz, and that is the first mode of a resonant frequency within this room. But it goes further than that. When you double that frequency, it is also a resonant frequency in this room. So 80 hertz and 160 hertz. Those are the resonant frequencies for the length of this room. However, when we also know the width and height height, we can also find the other resonant frequencies in this room. The height's first mode of a resonant frequency is 70 Hz, and the width is 60 Hz. Then again, we double them to find the second mode and third mode of the resonant frequencies. Now, I found a good website, and I'll put the link in the description below, um, that plays a frequency that you type in. So I've typed in 70 Hz, and I've moved around the room, and what I found was that a lot of bass build up here in this corner. So I would stand in the corner and the energy of the sound would be so extreme. And that is something that I need to cut out. But similarly, when I play that, I cannot hear it around here. So I don't want someone I'm recording standing here, listening to the song and thinking, oh, it's not bassy enough. And then myself adding bass as a producer. Now when doing these frequency tests, I was extremely worried by the bass build up in this corner. And the reason the bass builds up in this corner is that when sound reflects into the corners, it is creating just this huge energy field space here. So that's something that I specifically want to look at when treating this room. So 
So what I've managed to do in this room is add more absorption coefficients. For example, pillows are a great absorption coefficient. What pillows do is when the sound reflections come, they neutralize them more than a flat surface such as concrete or windows. I've also pulled the blinds down. Although this will only do a little bit, it still does enough to change the reverberation time in the room. Following this, I've added some bass traps in the corners of the room. Now, with an unlimited budget, I could add more bass traps to the roofs. Where you want your bass traps realistically are in the very corners of each room. I've also put a throw over my two guitars just to add more diffusion in the room. Finally, the problematic corner in the room. This is where I wanted to diffuse as much bass as possible so that when recording, the energy built up here wasn't coming back through behind my head and disturbing me when mixing and recording. What I've done here is add a throw over the door as a diffuser that's collecting more sound waves than it's reflecting. And also, similarly to the other wall, some bass traps in the form of pillows. As you can see, these pillows have a little air pocket behind them. That's fine. That's good because the sound has to travel through the pillows, through a small air pocket, to the walls and back. Now, although it's unorthodox, I have actually acoustically treated this room using household items such as pillows and throws. I'm now going to perform the same clap that I performed earlier in the video, and we're going to see if the reverberation time has changed. Thank you for watching this video on how I've acoustically treated my recording room in my house. If you'd like to know more, there's a few links below from where I got some of my information from that you can check out too. Thank you.